Good morning. Well, let's try to wrap up chapter 11 of John today. Amen. So Holy Spirit, God, come. We seek your guidance, seek your leadership in our life today. Lead us, Lord, today that we may be victorious. Anoint us today. Fill us with your spirit today. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you thanks in advance. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. This is word of the Lord. John chapter 11, verse 45. Actually, I was going to do the whole, oh man, how many pages? I got five, six pages on uh, aorist active imperative. And then I thought to myself, maybe not too complicated and I don't know if it's that all that necessary. So I'm gonna skip that and just read from chapter 11, verse 45 and on. And then let's try to finish this chapter, amen? This is word of the Lord. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees called the meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plot to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the desert to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus. And as they stood in the temple area, they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priest and Pharisee had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, he should report it so that they might arrest him and kill him. That's my words. Wow, a long scripture. So here is Jesus. Raised the dead, undeniable miracle. And no one is arguing against the miracle. <laughs> they don't have a problem with the miracle. They have problem with people turning to him and when they turn to him instead of the Pharisee group, Sanhedrin group or the priest group, then they think it's going to be negative on their overall influence. So they say, well, let's kill him. It's better for one man to die than the whole nation to perish. They, their, their projection of probability is now assumed as a fact. They're simply saying that, well, at this rate, we're, that he's going to bring so much power, the Romans have to come down and destroy us. What are they saying? So what's the underground uh, thought here? The underground thought is, as I said, they are looking for Messiah. 
they could set them free from their political bondage. So if you could get a guy who could multiply bread and fish and heal all the sick, huh, now raise the dead? Well, if you have a king like that, what other nation would you fear, right? Go to war every day, food provided, sick people heal, even if you die, he, he brings him back to life. Well, that's a winning combination, right? So they said, well, let's do this. And so I'm sure there are a lot of rumors. I'm sure the, the insurrectionists are so happy that, you know what, the Roman government has done enough. I'm tired of it. There is a young rabbi named Jesus. We could use him. We could make him a king. Let's, let's go. This is God-given opportunity. We could use it. So when these opportunists are talking to each other, now the group, the political group and religious group has united. <laughs> In that way, it's amazing how Jesus unites all the evil doors against him. Right? For evil to thrive, it takes good men to do nothing. So what happens is that when these evil doors they come together, united, and they are now going to kill Jesus. It will take a whole lot more good people to nothing. And that's what's going to happen. Well, that's what's happened. Well, not just this is not an independent event because ever since then, for the last 2,000 years, for Nazi to come up, it took a whole lot of good Christian people in Germany to do nothing. Right? Said, well, you know, and so when they knew that their dictator was killing Christ uh, Jewish people, as the train go by the village, they said the Jewish people, knowing that the village is near, they will scream and shout, help us, you know. And in the church on Sunday, when the train go by, they will actually raise the worship song loud so they will don't have to hear the screaming. Okay, but really? How did that happen? It's happening. It happened then, and it's happening in America right now, right? So here, the religious leader and political leaders, they got together, and they said, well, church and state, let's do this. Their faith community and political community united, and they are talking to each other, and they are projecting at this rate. This called probability. It didn't happen yet. According to the data, according to the popular uh, consensus, according to the poll, right? At this rate, the Romans has to come down. And Romans will kill us all. The Romans will destroy our nation. Romans will destroy this temple again. And they could talk about history. All the historians, the cronies will come out and talk about, well, that's what happened. And they'll project. And the uh, forums will be done. The uh, seminar will be done. And symposium will be done. And, and all these guys, smart guys, they talk about, well, that's what's going to happen. So finally, someone has to be responsible. So Caiaphas, who was the high priest at the time, I said, well, we cannot really rebuke. You know, it's obviously a miracle. Dead man came alive. How do you refute that? Well, man was blind, blind by birth, sees now. The guy that 38 years of par paralyzed now walks. Well, how can you how can you deny that? Well, the people who went hungry got fed, and there were 10,000 people. You cannot explain that. So guess what? Since we cannot explain, let's admit that. That's okay. So it could be God. But. Don't you understand it? He's going to cause a nation to be destroyed. So let's kill him so that we will, as a nation, will not be destroyed. That was a conclusion. Well, <laughs> they were basically saying that we are more afraid of the Roman governments than Almighty God. It may be God's act, but 
we are not going to stand by and as a leader, as a leader, we're not going to let this nation be destroyed. Okay? So they put a bounty, uh, hunters loose, basically. Well, we said you give you permission, bring him in, bring him in. Um, when I read scripture like that, I have to sit and think, how does that apply in my life today? I mean, you know, something that happened 2,000 years ago, that's fine. You know, and my life will go on fine without what happened 2,000 years ago. That's what most people think. Like, oh, okay, that's what happened 2,000 years ago, but so what? My life uh, will continue to happen, and what happened 2,000 years ago doesn't matter. But unfortunately, if we do not learn from history, the history had tendency to repeat itself. Repeat itself. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is learn from the history and have uh, change something today that will prevent that. I was watching a very interesting um, program that's interviewing all these uh, doctors, the CSI doctors. So this Korean CSI, there's only 60 Korean CSI doctors. And, and uh, you know, someone specialized in dental records, some specialize in decomposition of the body, some people on you know, burn, burning victims and so on and so forth. They said, uh, compared to England, number one, Koreans have such a woefully low number of professionals in the field. So their caseloads are stacking up. And they were giving an example. In England, about 25 years ago, I vaguely remember about 25 years ago, uh, there was in the Premier League soccer game. the maddening crowd rushed to the front and there was a fence protecting the players from the players, players from the spectators. And the spectators were crushed against the, the fence, 95, some almost close to 100. If I remember correctly, 95 spectators were stampeded to death. Huge issues, right? Um, guess how many years the English system studied, evaluate, uh, and come to change policy? That means they changed the policy right away about the fences. And so um, they just concluded it took them 20 years. It actually engage in 20 years of research, talking, interviewing, and they finally concluded that it was the system failure. The police did not report. Uh, they released, open up certain door without telling in the front, open up the front door. And why was it circumstantially uh, happened? It, they did thorough research for 20 years. Wow, you know, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Koreans can do that. Um, we just had a massive killing of the young kids who are wearing the life jacket, but the captain said, stay in your room and the boat capsized. Seoro in Korea. And they just try to wrap it up. And they said, it's okay. And they are now, even the average citizens are so fed up. It's like, they don't want to hear that anymore. It's like, wow, the innocent kids died. And, and no policy has changed. Um, it's amazing. Okay. So here, day one, simple solution. And when political system 
and religious systems get together and unite, this kind of monstrous event could take place. That's why we want it to be separated. Separation of state, separation of church. And it, for, for, for that, this, from this perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Well, time ran out. So, yeah, I, I think today, as Jesus is now um, hiding in a way, he will not uh, stand out. He will go into hiding place and stay away, right? And a uh, country called Ephraim near the desert to a village called Ephraim where he stayed with his disciples. So he's not making it into a political scene. He's not doing anything to agitate more, but taking rest. I think that's just wisdom too. Right? Don't, uh, unless God tells you to live in peace. Shalom. Okay. Amen. I hope uh, today that you learn to have a wisdom to discern what is it? Should I, what, what do I need to do? And maybe it's time for you to just Find, seek shalom in Christ. Amen. Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.